In this session, we will learn how to create a brick texture using Substance Designer. Bricks Pattern Underscore Tutorial First, click New in the File menu in the upper left corner. Select Substance Graph. Then, select Metallic Roughness in Templates. This template will enable us to see a more realistic result of the texture. Once the file is open, you will see Base Color, Metallic, Roughness, Normal, Ambient Occlusion, and Height nodes. These nodes have attributes that make the texture look realistic. First, create a node by searching for Brick Generator. Set the number of bricks to 4 on the x-axis and 8 on the y-axis. Then, widen the gap between the bricks by setting the gap to about 0.04 on the x-axis. If you look closely, you can see a slight gradient in the brick image. To eliminate this, create a threshold node and connect it. Set the value to about 0.45 and set it to greater mode. In order to create more natural bricks, even if they are in the same color family, they should differ slightly. To achieve this, we will randomly assign colors to the bricks. To identify individual areas of the brick pattern, create a flood fill node and connect it. In safety slash speed trade-off, select complex or big shapes for area recognition computation. Now, connect the previously created flood fill node to a newly created flood fill to grayscale node at the top, and connect the node before the flood fill at the bottom. Then in flood fill to grayscale, set luminance adjustment to minus 0.6 in random value to 1 to get randomly set values. Even bricks of the same shape should look a little different to appear natural. To achieve this, let's use a noise texture to distort the pattern shape. Create a warp node and connect it to the input. Then, create a Perlin noise node and connect it to the warp's gradient input node. Set the Perlin noise scale to 10 and the warp intensity to 0.07. Next, we will add texture to the brick texture using a noise texture. First, create a directional noise to node and set the scale to 2 and the angles degree to 90. Also create a new Perlin noise node and set its scale to 7. Create a warp node like before and connect the directional noise to node above and the Perlin noise node below. Set the scale to 1. Now connect the previously warped brick texture to create a blend node and connect the warped noise texture to the foreground of the blend node. Then set it to subtract mode and set the opacity to 0.61. To mix another noise, create a blend node and this time, create a grunge rough dirty node. Set the balance node to 0.39 and the contrast node to 0.53. Now, connect the Grunge Rough Dirty node to the top node of Blend and set the Blending mode to Soft Light. Finally, to add a texture that looks like splattered paint, create a Dirt 2 node, set the scale to 1, and then create another Blend node. Connect the Dirt node to the top and the previously blended node in the middle, and set it to subtract mode. So far, we have created a primary texture for the orange part of the brick, and now we will create a texture for the part between the bricks. Create an invert grayscale node and connect it to the node we used for threshold before. This will allow you to apply a texture to the space between the bricks. Now to add noise to this part, create a band blue spots to node, set the scale to three, then create a blend node, connect it to the top, and connect the invert grayscale node in the middle. Set the blending mode to multiply and set the opacity to 0.94. Then create a new warp node, connect the blend node to input, and bring the Perlin noise node used for the warp earlier directly to the bottom node. Set the intensity to the same as before, 0.07. Here again, create a blend node and connect it to the middle node, and this time create a grunge shavings node and connect it to the top of the blend node. 
Set the balance value to 0.34. Set the blending mode to max lighten. Now, connect both the brick part texture and the seam texture to the gradient map node, then select color mode and specify the color of the gradient. The brick part texture starts from the left with black and sequentially becomes brighter orange as it goes to the right. And the seam part texture is also black on the left and sequentially becomes brighter gray as it goes to the right. In this way, you have completed the base color texture of the brick part and the brick seam. Now we are going to combine the two, create a blend node, connect the brick part to the middle node, the seam part to the top node, and set it to max lighten. Now, if you connect this node to the base color node, the basic texture is complete. However, additional work is needed to make it look more realistic. First, as the overall roughness and metallic of the brick texture are the same, you can connect them by specifying the color with the uniform color node, without creating a separate texture. Since the bricks are generally rough, set the uniform color to a value close to one. Here, set the output color to 0.87 in grayscale mode. Since bricks are non-metallic material, set the uniform color to zero. Set the output color to zero in the same way as before. Next, we're going to create a normal texture. Take the node just before applying the gradient map to the brick part. Create a blur HQ grayscale node and connect it. Set the intensity to 0.38 and quality to 1. Applying this blur treatment allows us to implement a more natural normal texture. Now, create a normal node and connect it directly. Set the intensity to 3 and the normal format to DirectX. Connecting this to the original normal node, you will notice the texture becoming more three-dimensional. To create an ambient occlusion, we're going to blend the brick part and brick steam textures. Create a blend node and then connect both nodes from just before applying the gradient map. Connect the brick part to the middle, the seam part to the top node, and set the mode to max lighten. Then, take this node and create an ambient occlusion, HBAO, node, and connect it. Set the height depth to 0.23 and radius to 0.03 with quality set to 8 samples. Connecting this node to the ambient occlusion node creates a shadow effect in the black areas, resulting in a more natural three-dimensional look. Finally, we're going to create height. Take the threshold node created at the beginning, create a blend node, and connect it to the middle node. Next, apply invert grayscale to the grunge shavings node created earlier and connect it to the top node of the blend. Blend it in min darken mode. Now, by connecting it directly to the height node, the brick part seems to pop out, allowing you to implement a more natural texture than when only the base color was connected. Thank you.